It's time for another tale from the glass guarded world with Brian as Paxton the human cleric, Ashley as Tara Dane the human fighter, Andy as Finn Mac Caspinner the gnome wizard, and me, Mike, as the DM. In the previous episode, Tara, Finn, and Paxton took a break from their trip northward to investigate a goblin cave, hoping to rescue some kidnapped farmers. After defeating some guards, they confronted Gibdar and Lorne, a goblin and hobgoblin, respectively, who were leading the goblins. They slew Gibdar, but Lorne drank a potion of invisibility and escaped. Two goblins remained in the fight, and Paxton picked up the magical glass sword that Gibdar had dropped. A change suddenly came over Paxton as he gripped the weapon. Also, some DM's notes. Remember that we have made some mistakes with Finn's grease spell resulting in an excessively large area of effect and some confusion about the required dexterity saving throws. We also mistakenly thought that standing up consumed the character's entire move instead of a half move. Finally, we're not quite using the regular D&D rules for killing unconscious opponents, although that's not so much a mistake as a choice not to bother with rolling attacks against unconscious goblins. One more thing. In case you're wondering, I took Brian aside when Paxton picked up the glass sword and explain the effect the sword would have on Paxton. Although, I didn't let you, the listener, in on that in the last episode. Brian didn't just make up all the stuff that is about to happen. Paxton thinks he has a grip on the sword, when it is really the sword that has a grip on Paxton. sword, grip it really tightly, and I look over at those goblins that are covered in grease, and I throw down my shield, and I put both hands on the sword, and just kind of look at them and have this really evil grin on my face. If I wasn't unconscious, I would go, oh no. (laughs) Tara, it's your turn. I'm going to use a move to go back to the um, unconscious body of uh, Finn so that he can be within my protection and uh, I'll use my second hand axe to try and throw it at the goblin great (laughs) I did not make it I got a five Uh, the goblin just leans out of the way Uh, and that means we are uh, back to the goblins who look slightly panicked and shoot at Paxton what is Paxton's AC now without his shield 19 Without his shield? I, well. Your shield gives you a that. plus three to AC, That's right? That's right. So I guess your AC is 16 now. Yeah, I suppose so. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So one of them missed you. However, one of them hit you with a natural 20. Okay. Uh, you take four points of damage. Okay. But of course, how do you feel about these four points of damage? Don't care at all. Yeah. It only makes me more mad. Uh-oh. <laughs> Paxton, it's your turn. So how close are are they to me? They are, at this point, I guess, 15 feet away? Wait, quick question. Are they still standing on my grease? Yes, they're just standing there on your grease. Then they need to do another dexterity like, saving oh, every, throw. Every round? At the end of every turn that they're Not just they try to move, the... but just standing there. Right, so they okay. have to succeed the first time to stand up, and then uh, that's their... That's their move action. Okay. Then if they survive the second one, then on their next turn, they can move out of the grease. Otherwise, they fall back down and have to start the process. Over I here. see. Yeah. Okay. Well, they haven't moved, so they need to roll again. Uh, one, the of, 14. one of them is still on his feet. The other one falls down. All right. It is now Paxton's turn. Okay. Um, I want to walk over to the one that is down, mm-hmm. uh, but I assume to get there, I'm going to have to make a deck saving That's throw. Correct. All right. So... 16. You are on your feet, and you are now next to the prone uh, goblin. That gives you advantage on attack against it. Awesome. Okay. Those were two really bad rolls. Um, Nine. I'm afraid he manages to roll out of the way, however. And that that brings (laughs) us back to Terra. How big is this uh, field of grease? 
uh, it's quite a large area, actually, right? It's it's covering uh, uh, just basically everything behind where the people you were fighting, uh, the two gob- the goblin and the hobgoblin, a uh, large area behind them is uh, coated in grease. I'm going to sigh heavily because this is not going to be very graceful and, <laughs> and try to approach one of the goblins uh, or the set of goblins so that I can attack them. All right, make so your dex, dex check. Oh, I got a three. All right, Terra falls down. So there's a goblin down and Terra is down and then Paxton is standing uh, next to another goblin. Oh, I, actually, yeah, you're standing near another goblin who is staying there with his uh, with his bow. Uh, that brings us to the goblins. One guy tries to stand up. He succeeds and stands. So he has to make a dex check to stand up. Is that right? Um, no. If you said that it takes their move action to stand up, then it takes their move action. Right. They get to the rest of their actions, but since they will still be standing on the grease, and right. unless they get another move for some reason, then they do another dex save throw at the end of their turn to see, see if they can stay up. I see. All right, so he stands up. And he'll try to attack you with his sword. He just drops his bow and arrow and tries to attack you with his sword. He misses badly. Uh, And the other one decides to uh, spend his movement exiting the greased area. So he's actually moving along the wall, trying to keep away from Terra. He's moving along the wall uh, with his bow. And then when he exits the greased area closer to the entrance to the room, he will try to take a shot at Terra. And he misses. Okay. And that brings us to Paxton again. You are still next to the guy who is on the ground. He has stood up and tried to hit you, uh, but he missed. All right, I'm burning to murder this guy. Let's see, attack with the uh, glass sword, which is a 22. That is definitely a hit. Glass sword comes crashing down like you knew it would. Six damage. He goes down. Goblin number two is down. He is unconscious. Woo. It is Terra's turn again. One goblin has exited the greased area and is shooting at you with a bow over by a wall to your left. Okay, so I can stand as my move action. Um, I'm not near him, so I guess I, I can't move further, so I'm just going to defend myself with my shield. And then do I have to roll to see if I continue to stand? At the end of your turn, yes. Okay. Ooh, I got a 10. No, that's an 8. Uh, you fall down again. I knew I shouldn't have do this stupid <laughs> We need more range. All right, so it's the goblin's turn. Uh, the goblin who is by the wall takes a shot at uh, Terra and misses. Lots of misses. And it's Paxton's turn again. All right, I give him the coup de gras. All right, Paxton finishes off the goblin on the ground, and a gray mist floats up into the air. And then I turn and look at the other goblin and kind of lick my lips. Uh, he makes a panic noise. <laughs> And looks like he's eyeing the exit. And that brings us to uh, Tara again. Tara, what do you want to do? Stand up. Tara stands up. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else to do. Continue to see if I stand up. Okay. I got a six. <laughs> she falls back down. <laughs> so much for my grace. <laughs> I'm just covered in grease. Is this the second or third time you fall down? Grease doesn't require concentration, right? It just <laughs> Let's find out. No, it does not. Actual okay. fluid, so. All right. Uh, <laughs> this is just a comedy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this all just turned into a giant mess. Slapstick. Literally. <laughs> Goblin's turn. He makes a run for it. He runs at the curtain and exits through the curtain, which means it's Paxton's turn again. Hmm. I run. Well, I guess I have to make a deck saving throw right. to see if I can run out of the right. grease, but I want to try okay. to run out of the grease after this guy. All right. It's difficult terrain, right? Yep. Which means that I think you can only move uh, half your normal move, right? Is that how diff- difficult terrain works? So, so I'm about 15 feet in, so right. even if I if I uh, saved on a dex throw, then, uh, then I'd make could, it out of the grease. That's right. And okay. you could do it. You could make it into a dash. In other words, you could move another 30 mm-hmm. feet after that. All right. But you wouldn't be able to attack that round. Nope. Paxton falls down. All right. So everyone is, in one manner or another, down. It's back to Tara. Uh, Again, stand up. See if I can stand up. (laughs) All right. Tara stands up. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) You can hear the pitter-patter of goblin feet. Paxton, it's your turn. All right. I'm going to stand up and try to dash again. 
Uh, Tara, I should say, if you wanted to use like a, I think you could move a dash action, right? Use a dash action, which you could means you could try to move after standing up, but you wouldn't get to attack or anything, right? Do you want to do that and exit the grease? Yes. All right, so she's not going to try to fight or anything. She just exits the greased area, and you're trying to do the same. So I stand up. Uh huh. I try to exit the grease. Wait, I stand up, which is one movement. Right. And then I use dash to try to do another movement to get out of the grease, right. and I rolled a 16. You're out of the grease. Okay. All right. So you have both exited the grease, and you're near the curtain now. Um, Finn is still on the ground back behind you. The curtain is just moving after a couple people have moved through it, right? Um, so you're going to chase, I suppose. The goblin's move is the same as yours. Can I make a suggestion to Paxson? You can try. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I think you should get Finn up, because I... We kind of need him. I look at Finn and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm out of healing magic. There's nothing I can do for him. The only thing I can do now is kill this guy. So you run down the hallway and the goblin is, it's, like I said, it's a long hallway from the large room into this room that you were in, right? And you can see that just at the end of this hallway ahead of you, you can see the goblin turns left, which would be um, from, the, from the direction you came in. He basically, t- he turned the direction that you didn't go, the direction the wheelbarrow did not go. Right When you first came in, there was a large room. There was a wheelbarrow that went left and straight, the wheelbarrow path that went left and straight. And he has gone the other way. He's gone to what is your left now, but which was to the right when you came in. Hmm. Okay, so he's turned that way and he's running down the hall. I assume you continue after him. I feel like I'm compelled to chase after him, but I know that that's not the thing I should do. So I don't know how to resolve that. Like, I want to I wanna fight it because I know that there could be more goblins right. down there, and I'm not in great health. Uh, make a wisdom save. 18. You decide that a big, tough guy like you knows when it's okay to stop chasing something puny and worthless like a goblin. So you decide not to, hmm. if you want to. <laughs> I, yeah, I, th- I want to. All right. So Paxton stops chasing. What's Tara going to do? Tara's going to go um, use her longsword to free the humans. Um, and while she's cutting the rope from them, she's um, she's going to say, in the future, when you recount this story, can you remove the falling down parts? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the man says, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see anybody fall down. You guys are, you guys are real tough warriors, and everything went very smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. How'd that go? Is that right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. All right, so you free the two of them, and they're fine. They're not injured in any way. They would like to know, would you help them get their cows up and lead them out? Because that's the, pretty much the only stuff they've got left. I've got to help my buddy first. Uh, we'll we'll see what we can do with your cows. Uh, when my healer friend is uh, back. Well, he's back. Paxton, you turned around and went back as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Paxton's there. I'm, uh, I'm loading my shield that I threw down on the ground. I'm putting it on my back, but I'm not using it. I'm still both hands on the yeah. sword. All right. He's got his sword. He's very happy with it. Uh, uh, Finn is lying on the ground, and the two humans say, uh, we, I guess we could, we could put your friend there, the gnome, we could put him in the wheelbarrow, except it's filled with cow poo, so we probably don't want to do that. He uh, wouldn't appreciate it. No. I guess we could, if we could get one of our cows moving, we could throw him on the cow. Would I be able to do a medicine check of some sort to, like, get him to one HP to where he's at least woken up? Well, according to the rules, I don't think medicine lets you do that. Hmm. If you had a healing potion, you could do something with that. Can, Can I just slap him a bunch? <laughs> uh, okay, you slap him a bunch. He's groggy and kind of flops his head around and mumbles something, but he doesn't wake up. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah. While we're here, let me go ahead and roll a um, 1d4 to see how many hours I'll be unconscious. Two hours. So for the next two hours, I'm outie. What's next? You freed the two humans. Uh, Their names are Odella and Sheldon. You guys didn't have anyone else with you, did you? No, it was just the two of us and the cows. We had some chickens, too, but they didn't bring the chickens. Um, Looking at Paxton, perhaps we could take a rest. That way we can... Move along the cows and get Finn up. I guess. I'm pretty hurt, too. And you don't look so great. That's a good point. Yeah, let's take a rest. All right. I'm going to make sure the curtain is closed so that we can see if anyone's going to come through it. Okay. 
Um, right about this time, both cows give sort of a shudder and uh, let out some really painful sounding mooing noises and expire. And uh, gray mists float up from them and drift away. Well, and, that makes uh, our job easier. And Sheldon says, my cows, that was all we had left. Did they really burn our house? Oh. Sure did. Sorry. Oh, well, we're going to have to travel over to a new tower and see if we can start over. You have your lives. Oh, that's something. We got each other. Yeah. So is there anything else in this room that might be of value other than the cows and the people? Well, uh, to, to recount the things in this room, uh, there's a dead goblin, two dead goblins, right? Gribdar and another goblin. Um, they each had a, a shield, uh, and the other goblin had a short sword. Uh, there's a, a fancy chair made out of bones. There's a, a bunch of barrels and crates of, of uh, let's see, let's see what all is in those. You find some, uh, some coins in, in, a, in a box. There are eight gold, seven silver, and 35 copper coins. You find one barrel of a strange greenish, brownish, vile, bubbling substance. You find several barrels of flour, dried fruit, and other food supplies. Dried fish as well. And you find one potion bottle. Does it say anything specific about what type of potion it is? No, it doesn't say anything specific, but... You would guess it is a potion of healing. Okay. I take it over to uh, Finn and pour it into his unconscious mouth. All right. It's a potion of healing. <gasps> what happened? Where's the goblins? What's going on? Fire in my hands. He wakes alert and ready to fight, and he gets back. What is it? 1d4 plus? Uh, 2d4 plus 2. 2d4 plus 2? Yeah. Uh, great. 2d4 plus 2. You want to roll one? I'll roll one. Sure. Uh, <laughs> One. One. Three. Four. Six. All right. Six health. That's like all your health, ain't it, weakling? <laughs> Almost. So right. Finn is back <laughs> up to six. Uh, he's feeling much better. The uh, humans, Odella and Sheldon, they say, well, now that we can all walk again, can we, can we just get out of here? I don't, I don't really want to hang out in here. I don't care. Go where you want. I'm not stopping you. Oh, well. There's One second. Goblins Wait. around. We were kind of hoping that we were kind of hoping that maybe you guys could, you know, see us to our house or something. Maybe would you mind walking us, walking with us over there? We can see them to their house. Yeah, I guess we haven't done enough for them already. <laughs> As I get up and um, start groggily coming into consciousness, I start looking around the room and I say, "One second, let me go ahead and see why they were here." Um, and I walk around and want to do an investigation check and also put a vial of whatever the bubbling liquid was into my inventory. Okay, you have a, vi a, a vial of foul, bubbling, greenish-brown liquid. You got it. And uh, 16 investigation. You don't find anything else other than the items I've described. You know, I guess I'll describe things in a bit more detail. That chair that I mentioned that's made out of bone, you think it's probably made out of cow bone. Okay. Um, and it's not terribly fancy. It's not very strong. You're not even sure that somebody could sit on it without it falling apart. It looks a little impressive from a distance. There's uh, enough food here to last quite a few goblins quite a long time. Uh, you would guess that this uh, wheelbarrow has been moving back and forth uh, between here and the, uh, that uh, other passageway for quite a while. Uh, there's plenty of sign of uh, goblins doing plenty of uh, their ordinary daily living in here. So there are tables and chairs. Uh, there is um, uh, a, a cooking area. They've been living mostly in this room. They've okay. been doing their, their daily awake activities in this room. Okay, so there's, there's beds, there's a kitchen, there's chairs, all that stuff. So how many people can I infer live here? How many beds, how many chairs? There aren't beds, actually. I'm okay. sorry, tables and chairs. There aren't any beds. How many chairs are there? Uh, you would think that probably 12 people, there are 12 chairs. 12 people could sit here comfortably. More people could, could hang out in here and eat if they're willing to stand or okay. depending on whether you count the throne. All right, so I don't think we got the main force. I think it's probably a better idea if we move out and then deal with the situation whenever we're not close to dying. I would rather not see my mist again, if we can help it. Do you guys want to do anything, or shall we head out? We should probably check on our horses. Yeah, I'm bored of this place. You seem irritated. All righty. 
Uh, so I guess we walk out of the cave and we'll start walking out of the cave and bring the humans and the... No, cows are dead. Bring the humans as we console them. So you uh, you walk back the way you came. You ignore the passages on your left and your right and head back out the uh, the exit. Oh, uh, I asked one of them if they can carry my extra stuff because I can't. Sure. Awesome. The, uh, Sheldon offers to carry your bag for you. It's the least he can do. <laughs> so you exit, and as you exit... You don't hear any sounds. Uh, you don't hear any sounds, obviously, of cows, but you don't hear any footprints or anything like that. And when you exit, you uh, walk up the uh, slightly up the hill to your cart, and your cart and your two horses are still there. And also around your cart are six dead goblins. Oh, dear. Just lying on the ground around the cart. Okay. Wow. Looks like we found the main force. Um, I'm, I'm sure going to inspect right our cart to see if I can determine who was here or if they're still here. Your cart and your horses look unmolested. They have okay. not been disturbed. Not even the cover of the cart. No one's peeking around. Um, do you guys, since it seems that the main uh, force of goblins has died, do you guys want to take a small break out here before we head out of the forest? I'm going to loot the bodies. So if we take a rest of about an hour or so... I want to use the time to recast my Unseen Servant and cast the tech magic to make sure that Grey Cloak didn't put some sort of tracker on our our cart. Understood. And do you want to use a hit dice to regain any hit points, anyone? Yes. Yeah. All right. Sure. I'll use one. 1d6 plus 2. Heck yeah. 6. So I'm full health. Same. And I'm I'm thinking that since there's six dead goblins out here, plus the four goblins from inside, I'm thinking that we did kill the main force, and that I kind of want to go check out those other tunnels and see if there's loot in there. I agree. We didn't kill the main force. Did Tara uh, regain any hit points? Did she use her hit dice during your short rest here? Oh, I will. <laughs> Just uh, roll your your hit dice. <laughs> One. One. So you're up to three now? One plus Wait, your is comms. my hit dice an eight? I don't know. Oh, you're a fighter, so your hit dice is a ten. Your die, I'm sorry. Your hit die is at 10. More like a hit, please right. don't die. I'm <laughs> yeah, it's much better. I got 10. 10. All right. So uh, you're all back up to full hit points. As you're looting these bodies, again, they each have a sword, a short sword and a shield. Um, and they're wearing pretty crummy leather armor. Some of them have like a random item, like a piece of dried fruit or something. But if they had anything valuable, they weren't carrying it with them. As you're looting them, however, you notice that they have all been struck by... Some kind of force. Uh, they look cut and bruised, but you don't know exactly what uh, what killed them. It doesn't look like a sword attack. Uh, it doesn't. They weren't burned. You're not sure what killed them. I asked Finn if he's familiar with this kind of marking. Perfect. I want to do an kind of check to see if I can tell if the if they died with magic. You suspect that they were magic missiled to death. It may have been the great cloak that we saw earlier. I think he has a reason for following us. I think it's definitely not the grain anymore. There's no one else that knows that we were out here or would even have a reason to know that we were out here. I'm getting I, real sick of this guy. I really yeah. don't get his motives, but I, I can't say I'm unhappy right now. Eh. Well, for now, let's go ahead and try to investigate to see what happened out here. First, let's go ahead and see everything that we've gathered so far. Was there anything of interest that we found in there while I was passed out? We got uh, eight gold, seven silver, and 35 copper pieces. We can divide those up later, and I can just hold on to them in the meantime, if you want. That's fine. Money's not of too much importance right now. Did we find anything else? Were there any books, any scrolls, any armor, any weapons, anything? Just no. Some crappy leather stuff. But, eh. uh, you want a short sword or a shield or something? Take your pick. <laughs> a shield might not be bad. Um, can I do... Do I need to do a perception check to see that he has a new sword that he's not letting go of? It's pretty obvious. It's pretty he obvious. Has been, he's been holding this sword the whole time. Okay. Is that glass? Looks like it. Can I check it? I'll give it right back to you. You can see it from here. Oh, yes. I just want to do a check to see if there's any magic on it. Mm, can you do that while I'm still holding on to it? Can I do that while he's still holding on to it? Yes, you can. Of course. Here. Just sit in front of me for a few minutes, and then I want to do a detect magic uh, ritual on the sword. It is for sure magic. And what can I tell from it? So looking at the sword, you can see that it is a well-shaped glass sword. It's not a jagged piece of uh, glass. It is a well-shaped glass sword. Uh, It's got a uh, bone handle. It's got some carvings of just, um, they're not pictures of animals or people or anything like that on it, just sort of some abstract curves on it. There's no lettering on it. 
It's definitely magic and it's well made. Right. It's not goblin make. Is there any way for us to know if a glass item is part of glass from the wall of the world? It is almost certainly glass from the wall of the world. What? How, how would we determine that? Basically, no one would use a glass weapon unless it was made of the walls of the okay, world. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Um, what school of magic is it? Enchantment. Enchantment? Huh. Well, this is odd. I can't really quite tell what the what this does. I do know that it's magic and that it works with some term of charm or enchantment. I would say keep using it, but with care. You would need an identify spell to get more information about That's what fine. exactly it can do. En- enchantment is enough. Yeah. Um, all right. I say we go ahead and do a quick exploration and move on. Odella? Uh, what was his name? Odella. Odella. No, I'm sorry. His name is Sheldon. Odella, Sheldon, you're welcome to stay here with and wait until we come back. But if you want to go to your burnt house, we can come find you whenever we're done. Uh, where where are you folks headed? We're headed back inside to see what we can find. Oh, back in the in the okay. Well, I guess um we'll just hang out with your cart. I guess we don't really want to go back in there. And that's quite all right. Stay safe. I don't think you'll be attacked anytime soon. Okay. Or you might have some help. Hey guys, you know all that uh, that fish and the grain in there. Maybe we say all that stuff's yours now. Well, I guess if you if you can help us get it back to our house, although we have to rebuild our house, we well, at least you can sell some of it to make yeah, the money. We got to get it to market, though. Uh, wh- well, where- we got this right cart. now. It seems like you're looking for excuses for me, Sheldon, and I'm trying uh, to help but, you. Well, out. Uh, get what I'm asking is, where mm-hmm. are you folks headed? Because if we could hitch a ride, you know, we could we could carry our stuff with you and we could sell some of it and and, and pay you a little bit. For the for the, for the we we got this cart and we're headed to Zebrafield and it would be all right if you put your fish on the cart with us. So you're gonna cross the old bridge to get up there. Uh, whatever's the best way. Yeah, that's the way you would go. Is you'd go across the old bridge. They said, well, there's a town there by a tower called uh, the town's called New Tower, and we could go over there. There's a market. We could sell stuff. There's a bank there. We could get some of our money out of. Maybe try to rebuild. That would that would be fine. As long as you can stick by that cart with us right now. And all right, we'll stay by the cart. Okay. All right. So you're going back in? Yeah. Do you want to go? Definitely. All right. Back inside the tunnel. So again, you're you're back to that middle room that where it splits left and right, and you've already gone straight. Left is where the trail of the wheelbarrow goes, and right is you you don't know what's over there. There's no wheelbarrow. Oh, last thing. Uh, during the break, I wanted to use my arcane recovery to regain one spell slot. Right. During your short rest, you recover a spell slot. Left or right? I see we go right. That's where that goblin who was running away went to. I feel like cow poop is left, too, so I don't want to go to cow poop, so right. Right, okay, that's what I thought you meant. <laughs> um, all right, right we go. Okay. And then I look at you guys waiting for you to move, because I'm definitely not going first after almost dying again. I, I look back, and I, I, I tell Finn, you, if we encounter anything, I'll, I want you to stick by me, all right? Yeah. Will do. Stick with the girl, weakling. Well. Don't sass him. Don't tell me what to do. I start waving the sword at you, and I'm like, maybe if you had something like this, you'd be able to protect yourself. I think I've handled myself just fine. Well, let's keep going and see what we find ahead. The passage mm-hmm. to the right uh, goes mostly straight, curves toward the end, and then about 60 feet away, uh, there's another heavy curtain, and you hear no sound coming from the other side if you want to, you want to do perception checks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Again, you hear no sound coming from the other side. Pushing aside the curtain, uh, you found a barracks. And there are 12 cots in here. Uh, there's also a pile of picks and some shovels, some ragged-looking clothes. There are two beds that are clearly nicer than the others. They're cleaner, and they have pillows. It looks like some people have, uh, or some goblins have quickly opened some, uh, some, some sacks and opened some chests in here and taken what they could and, and ran out. Uh, and it looks like whatever they had, it must have been nothing more than weapons and shields because there's really nothing of interest in here, as you can tell. This is where they slept. And they had some equipment stored in here. They left their axes and shovels be- and pickaxes and shovels behind. They have taken their weapon and armor and apparently ran out the front and got killed. Okay. Um, can I do an investigation check to see if I can tell if those shovels and axes were recently used? I want to tell if they've been digging. They have been recently used. They were used uh, to dig, yes. There's definitely something out going on here. Let's go to the other end of the cave and see what ha- what's going on. All right, so you go down the passage that the uh, wheelbarrow went down. Yeah, do you guys want to go down that way? Mm-hmm. Yeah. May as well. All right. All right, you continue down the passage that way. 
Uh, and uh, there is a wooden door at the end of this uh, passage. And this door is somewhat crudely made, and it is strapped to the, uh, to the walls with some leather straps. It has basically leather hinges. They're easy to pull aside, but there's a really unpleasant smell coming from the other side. I want to grab the door and rip it off its hinges and throw it. All right. It's not hard to do. It's not built sturdily. It's just built to, to keep this uh, area sealed off. The wheel track is, as I said, from a, from a wheelbarrow. The track continues into the room. Just a wall of unpleasant smells hits you in the face. This room is a large room. It's been um, recently made larger. You can tell there's been some digging around the edges of the room and some new reinforcements added. And in the middle of the room is a heap of cow dung, goblin waste, uh, some scraps of clothing. You could search through it if you want to see what else is in there. Nope. <laughs> Can I use my mage hand to search through it? You could. I'll do that. All right. Um, what's your Back investigation? Out the doorway. Plus six. <laughs> so searching through it, uh, you find some uh, some beads, little tiny glass beads. It might be worth something. I'll grab them. Um, some bones of um, some chickens and cows and lizards and a few other things. Other gross stuff that I don't need to explain. <laughs> and you find a single gold ring. I will take that. Uh, to, okay, can I use my water skin and my unseen servant and to have... Rinse the, it off. Yeah, I'm going to have the mage hand hold onto it in midair while the unseen servant just pours water and cleans it for me. All right, you have cleaned off the gold ring. Perfect. I'll go ahead and now grab it with my hand and put it in my backpack. Okay. Still with only two fingers. Great. And that's all that's in this room. Forever unclean. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's really unpleasant in here. I'm assuming you want to leave. Yes. Yeah, yes. let's go get those barrels and okay. yeah, this gross cave. <laughs> you haul the uh, supplies out of the big room up through the passage. Barrels can be rolled up pretty easily. The boxes take a bit more effort. There's not a lot of room on the cart, but since you guys have been eating some of your supplies as uh, time goes by, there's a bit of room you can load some of this stuff up on there. And uh, Odella and, Sh and Sheldon will help you. And eventually you're able to load the cart up. I asked them if they saw anyone while they were waiting with the cart. Nope, it's been quiet. All right. Let's get out of here. All right. I think um, we can start moving while we move. Like, want to let them know that there's a fellow in gray, so just keep an eye out for him. And I uh, want to go ahead and divvy up the gold if Paxton wants to do so. All right. All right. So what do each of us get? There's eight gold, seven silver, 35 copper, and I have to divide it by three. Right, wait, was that 35 or 75? 35, 35 copper. copper. That's what I thought, okay. If y'all want three gold each, I will take two gold, seven silver, 35 copper. Okay, so then the 32, then how would you take the 13 silver and then the other copper thing? You take the... Uh... I would just take the rest, y'all take full gold. All right, cool. Oh, so we take three gold each and then you'll take the rest? That way we're not trying to do math that I can't do. Yeah, because <laughs> that, the, the other money yeah, is that basically... That I refuse to do, yeah. rather. That's the other money basically me. adds up to about a, a gold, almost a gold. All right. All right, perfect. So we each take three gold and she'll just take the rest. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Uh, Odella and Sheldon want to know if you could quickly go back by their house and they could see if there's anything they could salvage from there before we get back on the road. It That's should fine. be on their way out. Yeah, it's on your way. They pick up a few personal items that weren't completely destroyed in the fire. Um, they, they have a small hay shed. Do you want some hay for your horses to add to your... Uh, what you've got on the cart? As long as it looks fine. Okay. They'll uh, add to your hay supplies. I guess actually they got some oats that maybe be more compact and better better uh, food to carry for the ride. Uh, the rest of your day is uneventful. Um, Odella and uh, Sheldon will, will tell you a little bit about themselves. Uh, Sheldon says, uh, them wizards, they're setting up shop over there in New Tower. They got a nice tower, a bank, businesses that can help us get back on our feet. We'll be okay if we can just get there. They're putting up an aqueduct, too. It's bringing in water from the sea. You can barely see it just over there. And as you're riding up the hill, uh, they point back into the valley behind you, and you can see uh, distantly in the woods uh, where the land continues to slope downward and the trees are getting thicker. You can just make out a long, straight gray line cutting straight through the trees. It must be uh, several miles away from here. Considering that the land slopes down toward the sea, there must be some kind of plan to pump water up to the aqueduct because it's definitely going to be above sea level. You continue the rest of the day, uh, stop to rest at night. It's just a few more days over to uh, the old bridge. Uh, how far are we from the tower? The tower is right next to the bridge. So oh, just, okay. a, just so a few just days. A few days. 
while we're resting, can I do an insight check to see if I notice whether or not he's letting go of his sword? He sleeps with his sword in his hand. Yeah, I'm definitely not letting go at any point. Okay. Can I have a private conversation with Finn? All right. You two have a private conversation. I'm not a big fan of the new Paxson. Neither am I. He seems to be quite rude. (laughs) I would say it definitely has something to do with the sword. It definitely has something to do with the magic on it. I don't know many spells from the School of Enchantment. I honestly didn't pay too much attention during enchantment class. So I would say let's let him be for now as long as he doesn't turn aggressive. Let's try to get some help as soon as we get into town. If there's a new tower there, then there should be someone that can help us. We may be able to get the guards or someone to restrict him and be able to take away that sword. But for now, I don't think getting into a fight with him is a good idea. So you don't think we should pry it from him in his sleep? I think that if we try to pry it from him in his sleep, he will just wake up and attack us. Uh, We can try. I'm not against it. I just don't think it will bode over well. Yeah, I guess your mage hand isn't strong enough. Not against the grip of a enchanted lunatic. All right, well, we'll walk on eggshells around our murderous friend, Paxton. Oh, it's quite all right. I do think that it's a good idea to warn Odella and Sheldon. That way, if he does freak out, they understand why we're attacking someone that's traveling with us. And they should be somewhat wary of him because we don't want him triggered. Maybe we should just tell him he's grumpy. I I don't want to frighten him. They seem special. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they do seem like common folk. I I would agree. All right, let's just let him know that he's grumpy and that sometimes he had mood swings. There we go. There we go. All right. Aside from that, I'm going to go ahead and concentrate on these spells because I think I may be able to actually understand one or two tonight. As I try to make little birds appear in the middle of the air and they keep dying before they even fall to the ground. (laughs) All right, you're practicing some more spells. This is the saddest thing I've ever seen. (laughs) (laughs) Conjuring spirits is difficult. The next day, the sixth of the sixth month, you continue west along the road with Adela and Sheldon riding quietly in in the cart. To the northwest, you can begin to see the river exit, a dark hole high in the glass wall. Water flows out of it intermittently. Sometimes clear and steady, and sometimes tinted brown and coming in quick spurts. And when it does flow, the amount of water coming out is enormous. It's a little bit cooler here as you head west and you get closer to the walls of the world. And you estimate the area about two days from the old bridge. Paxton, it's been a while since you were in this area. uh, And you didn't come from this direction last time you were here. Uh, You know that there used to be a small community near the bridge back when the river was known as the God's River. Some believe that the river had a close connection with the gods and pilgrims would travel to this community and bathe in the river water. The last time you were at the old bridge, there was a little of this community left, though, uh, due to the breaking of the river. After stopping for lunch to rest the horses, you get back on the road. Uh, In this area, there are these large rock outcroppings, uh, smooth boulders that are randomly scattered around the landscape, and they're becoming more and more common. There are also clumps of stubborn, hardy trees growing here and there between the uh, boulders. Some of these rock formations are near the trail, and you can see signs of abandoned encampments on top of them. And these would probably make, as you continue to travel, good places to rest for the night. Do we see the uh, gray cloak guy following us? Occasionally, in the distance, you spot him. He tends to try to stay concealed behind some of these boulders, but he's not constantly hiding. And he does appear from time to time. I propose that we start a game where dinner is cooked by whoever catches him the least. So let's just keep track of how many times we see <laughs> him. How many times you see him? <laughs> yeah, to pass the time. I, I kind of want to confront him now. Like, not in an angry way. Maybe not with Paxson. Maybe I just go talk to him. I would be okay with that. All right. Well, as you're playing your game and discussing your uh, ambush plans, you're driving your horses, Paxton, you're still guiding the, the, the wagon, I suppose. So as you approach a pair of large boulders next to some woods, a voice calls out, and it says, Put your weapons down. No quick movements. No one has to get hurt. Who is there? I said, put your weapons down. And I asked who was there. You're not putting it down? All right. So uh, on a rock up on the left of the trail, uh, a man stands up and fires an arrow, which buries itself in the wagon next to Paxton. He says, I don't have to miss. We just want some food and a few coins, and you can be on your way. And two other ragged-looking men and a woman stand up on the two large rocks on either side of the trail. They're armed with short bows and short swords, and they're wearing leather armor. 
and they look thin and haggard. How many are there? Three men and a woman. And that includes the guy who uh, shot the arrow? That's right. Um, can I, with my perception, see if they, they don't seem like the robber type. They seem like maybe just starving farmers. You're pretty sure that's exactly what they are. I look at him and I say, well, you're welcome to have as much of our food as you want. Just come on down and get it. How about you just leave it by the trail and you head on your way? How about you don't argue with me? Oh, can I quietly say, how, how about we just give him some fish? Hmm. Okay. I'm trying to decide what I would want to. Because part of me wants to just be like... Just give them something, and part of me almost just died and might be a little bit... <laughs> I just... Uh, I'm deciding whether or not I would want to be confrontational. I'm good-natured, and I don't want to attack these poor farmers who I will destroy. <laughs> and I just feel like we can give them some fish. Adela says, uh, uh, fellows, look, look behind us. And two more people have stepped on the trail behind you. Two more of the ragged-looking men. Okay. So what do you need this food? I'm sure you're starving, but is there nothing nearby? Is there no work? Is city dead? We all used to be farmers, but you know what it's been like around here. We're just trying to keep ourselves alive, feed ourselves. Maybe well, one day we'll go back to farming, but right now, we're just trying to keep ourselves alive. All right, so I grab my dagger that I'm guessing is on my side. I drop it on, uh, I hold it as I'm talking to them. Well, if you just want to talk, we have more than plenty of food. I'll drop my weapons as long as you drop yours, and then we can all go ahead and have a meal and decide what's happening. Or we can go ahead and take our chances, uh, put a little bit of precipitation magic on my other hand, and see whether or not we will really have to deal with this. And then, I guess, intimidation check? Sure. Okay. Two, 19. He says, uh, well, we don't really want any trouble. We're just looking for some food. So he lowers his, his short bow. And the other men around them also, and the women lower their bows. He says, we, we'll be happy to just take some food off your hands. Of course. Come down here, and I'll drop my dagger. Well, just like I'm sure you don't trust us, we don't, uh, we don't trust you. I'll put my bow away. And he puts his bow away, and he nods at the other people, and they put their bows away as well. And he says, but we're, we're not coming down there. We're, we're, uh, we're not comfortable doing that. Okay. And, he, uh, and he, he says, but... You fellows, you guys can go back away. And the two guys that were standing behind you on the trail, they, they move back into the bushes behind the, behind the trail. Okay, behind can you on the trail. I nod at Adela and Sheldon to like give them some food from their fish stack? Yes. <laughs> yeah, not taking from my food. You might think they'd be grumpy about it, but they're actually glad to just put some food on the side of the trail and, and get moving. Yeah, Adela says, yeah, I heard, uh, I heard about this stuff. It happens from time to time. There's these farmers, they're having a hard time. It's difficult with the weather changing and... It's hard times. Uh, just give him some food and let's get on the way before some trouble happens. You okay with that? I'm not, I'm not dropping down my sword, but... No, but you're cool with us not fighting? I'm, I'm not saying anything. All right. All right. So after um, Adela and Sheldon put down their food, and we, go ahead and, uh, we can go ahead and start going while they go for the food, right? Yes. All yeah, right. They'll Perfect. wait for you to leave, actually. They're just going to stand there and wait for you guys to go by, and then they'll, they, they say they'll go down and get the All food. All right. And as we're riding out, I'll also let them know, there's a fellow in the gray cloak that's following us. He may not be as amicable as us, so I'm warning you that if you want to keep your life, it's probably best not to try to, this with him. Oh, thank you, stranger. We'll, we'll keep an eye out. You want, us to, you want us to slow him down or something? Yeah, attack him. You're welcome to try, but I do think you may die from it. Oh, well, we could just put something in the trail or something, you know. That would be quite useful. All right, we'll 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 slow him down, but we're not we're not getting in a fight or anything. Thank you. We do appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Y'all have a good day. All right, cowards. <laughs> we still get experience points for that. I say outside of game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rest of the day is uneventful. The seventh of uh, sixth month. Uh, this morning, your camp uh, is surrounded by uh, red morning blooms of the sixth flower, which. Uh, Paxton can tell you it's a summer flower that grows near the river in the summer, assuming Paxton's in the mood to talk about that sort of thing. I may mention it. All right. And Paxton, <laughs> you know that these can be used to make a good tea. Hmm. I don't necessarily tell them that it can be used to make tea. I just make some tea for myself. Fair enough. Uh, so there are two more days of travel, uh, today and tomorrow, and that should bring you to the old bridge. And from there, it's eight days to Zauberfeld. And you can see up in the sky, the broken river, where it exits the wall. 
is definitely getting closer. At mid-morning, uh, you can see that you are catching up with a caravan of dwarves. And they have two carts pulled by ponies, as well as two more ponies for riding. Okay. They're so not moving as fast as you are. We're pulling up to six dwarves? There are uh, two carts. Uh, there are 12 dwarves. Okay. And they have... Um, so some of them are riding in the carts, and then there are two more dwarves that are riding ponies. I greet them as we're passing. They greet you as well. Um, they explain they're heading for New Tower, and they've heard there's lots of work to be done there on building aqueducts. Uh, so they're looking for... They're stone workers. So they're, they're hoping to find some work. And uh, one of them says, Hi! Plenty of work to be done. I need more than one aqueduct, you see. The big one just brings in the water from the sea. They need smaller ones to send the water out to the fields. These farmers used to rely on the white rainfall, but now they can't, right? Don't get me wrong. Can't trust these wizard sorts. No offense, Master Gnome. Still well taken. These folks need water, and it would be a shame to let the farmland go to waste. We'll build them their aqueducts. And build them right. If that don't work out, well, there's plenty of work in four, ain't there, lads? And the other dwarves give a hearty cheer. Hmm. He tells you his name is Duradalt the Unyielding. Can I, um, since I'm small and we're going not too fast, can I ask to see if I can climb on their cart to see their wares or what they're carrying? They'll just tell you they're carrying... Right, but I want to climb on their cart. Oh, okay. Uh, they're a little bit weirded out by that. What, what, what you need with our cart? Well... I just really wanted to see what you have uh, to see what kind of stonework you do. I, I'm a bit of a thinker myself, and I personally find the work intriguing. I just wanted to talk with you a bit about it. Well, all right. You can see he just opens up some boxes on the cart. You can see we got our pickaxes and our shovels, and we got our chisels, and we got our uh, we got our weapons, of course. Each of them's fairly kitted out with equipment. You know, they're wearing armor. Oh, that's um, wonderful. Can I jump on and view a few? Like, I, are they letting me go on the cart? I'm mostly trying to persuade them to let me go on the sure. their cart. Sure, uh, the guy will get on the cart and show you what's in the boxes. All right, so now that I'm on their cart, uh -huh. with, the, with the guy that's the leader, um, can the I whisper adult. to him? Yeah, uh, can I whisper to him? Our friend seems to be having a small ailment, and since you have plenty of bodies, I was wondering, I'll, I'll flash him three gold coins. Can I employ you and a few of your men to help me with the task that should not be too dangerous? We just need to grapple him and take his sword. You want me to help you wrestle with your friend and take his sword? Yes, exactly that. I don't know what it's doing to him, but I've no and I've only known him for a little bit, but I do know that it's definitely doing something that's not good. All right. Uh, what's the plan? Well... I'll go ahead and propose a stop, since we have been going for several hours. You will go ahead and stop with us, and whenever we stop, I... How many men can you have ready for me? I just need you to go ahead and tackle him to the ground and take his sword. That's all you have to do. Uh, oh, I got no idea. All right. Y you, you tell him to come over and look at something that he might be interested in. Okay. So you want, him, want me to just get him on the cart? Doesn't have to be on the cart. We can take him on the ground, wherever. Perfect. All right. Whenever we make the next stop, then we'll go ahead and have you ambush. Well, it's nearly lunchtime. You want to stop now? Yeah. Oh, guys, they seem to have some really nice food. Do you want to stop and take a break? Maybe take a, uh, also a break from the dried fish and fruits that we've been having? Odella and Sheldon are up for it. You guys? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I wanted to make daylight, but uh, what, what food do we got? It, trust me, it'll be great. Dwarves say, "Well, we got we got beef. We got some dried beef. We've got we got uh, you like dwarven bread." I, I, mean, I guess it's, it would be nice to have a meal, nice real meal. I just realized Whatever. I could have spoken to them in dwarvish this whole time. <laughs> I guess that's rude, but yeah. Anyways, <laughs> all right. I also speak dwarvish. Oh, okay. I'll tell you in dwarvish. I They're going to help us deal with also Paxton. Speak do you do you speak Dwarvish? <sighs> Paxton, uh, you don't notice that anything is going on. I have rolled a, a perception check, and you don't notice anything suspicious going on. Do I perceive anything going on? Since he kind of can. Like I'm trying to. You nudge think her, yeah. something's going on, but you're not sure. You're not sure. You're not sure with what exactly is happening. It does seem a little like a long conversation. But in any case, the dwarves have just stopped. Pulled over their wagon and they're getting out their, uh, they're getting out their mess kits and they're starting to cook some food. All right, Come may over. as well break bread. 
All right. Odella and Sheldon will get out some stuff and uh, share their food with the dwarves. As uh, before I got off the uh, wagon, I'll go ahead and pull out three gold coins. I'll leave them on one of the seats, notch over to the guy, and then get it right. myself. He nods, and he starts walking around to his men, giving them each some uh, some, some little uh, uh, bowls, you know, saying something to each of them in dwarvish. You guys are, are seated and uh, eating. I don't. Is Paxton going to get off and eat with everyone, or what's his plan? Uh... I'm not going to let go of the sword, right, but I am going to go over there very cautiously because I don't know these people. And right. I think dwarves are probably the type of people who could pose a problem to me. Okay. Um, I Can I try and corner Finn somewhere where we can have a whisper combo? Sure. All right. So you, you start to lead Finn aside and all of a sudden Duradult says, now get him. And all the dwarves jump up and run at Paxton. Paxton.